This is when Armstrong went to the space and he took photographs. And he saw from there moon, uh, no, sorry, uh, Earth, the planet, our planet, and it all looked blue. Why is it? So the whole Earth as a planet is enveloped with what? Eh? Mystery <laughs> water. It's not mystery water, but I think that's the whole thing. It's always we call our planet as a blue planet, which means that it's enveloped with water. That's what it uh, is. Now, whether there is water in uh, where moon and moon, Mars or not, that's a little debate I think they are doing in things. But this whole thing is that we talk about a situation in which, you know, plenty as the type of a overarching context, we always looked at water. I think that is people changing. So, in fact, if you look at some of the numbers, now we say that about 97.5, I'm, I'm sure some of you know this number, I'm just putting it uh, to give a provider context, is salt water, which is we can't. I mean, it's basically sea. That's it. I mean, though now people are talking about the desalination and other type of thing, but in a uh, broadly we can say that it's unusable. So 70% of the planet is ocean, so only about 2.5% is the fresh water which we can in a way, uh, I wouldn't say utilize, but at least, uh, you know, of that quality. Of this, three-fourths is ice and in the polar regions and unavailable because you just can't get this water out. So the sum and substance is that out of this entire blue planet and things, what we have is about a fraction, that is about 0.007% of the water which is actually uh, which we can, which is find in, uh, found in rivers, lakes, or soil, or vegetation, like even biomass hold, or trees have, uh, you know, water in that, uh, which is actually, we can exploit and use it. So, I think my take here is that this should make us humble. I mean, otherwise, we had a developmental paradigm which was saying that water is an unlimited resource, and the human ingenuity or human technology, science and technology can manipulate water to any great extent. I would say that interlinking rivers is one of the, you know, uh, heights of this that, uh, you know, humans can do whatever it can do with and meet its needs, which is not true. And we should be able to limit our aspirations, our needs to whatever this 0.007% of the water which we are talking about, you know, this, and it's possible to do it. <clears throat> so globally what we are talking about is that, you know, we have, you know, billion cubic meters, the whole number is about 12,500 billion cubic meters. Uh, so we have something about 6 billion populations, so if you a simple arithmetic is that per capita available is about 2,000 cubic meter. In fact, people say, there are a lot of writings which say that if the availability of uh, water goes down uh, below, let's say, 1,000 cubic meter per person, then you say that there is an acute water shortage. I mean, the people's livelihoods cannot meet. Now, 2,000 uh, 2, million cubic meter is an average figure, there are extremes of this, not that Every region in the world can get access to or can use this much of water. There are extreme conditions and things. So, averages always mask that. And we are already using 50% or little more than that. So, the water which we have is less is little less. So, with increasing population changes in lifestyles and increasing demands from other sectors, this water would actually come down and has got uh, impact for this. So basically it is like a navigator who is going in the sea saying that you could see water everywhere, but we are saying that water, water everywhere, but not a drop. I mean, this is like a nursery rhyme. I think we need to revisit some of the wisdoms which is enshrined in some of these sayings and things. How do you manage with less uh, water and things? Now coming to India. So it is said that India has a population of a world share about 16% and we share only about 4% of the water resources. That itself is a very constraining factor. Uh, in this, uh, out of the annual precipitation about 3840, uh, evaporation is estimated. I mean, evaporation also interestingly estimated not in terms of actual values or observed data, but they have said that about 40 percent uh, of the total precipitation is, uh, you know, uh, 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 is going through evapotranspiration. But in fact, this is a figure which is being contested. In fact, there are academics like uh, I think Narasimhan or somebody has written said that. Actually, on the minimum, it should be 60 percent, not 40 percent. So, the, then that means the utilizable water later becomes, comes down by an order of maybe 50 percent or something to some extent. So, that is another issue. Uh, so, available water according to the 40 percent uh, evapotranspiration is about 2,000 odd. And uh, out of that, utilizable is again 50 percent. 
and we are already using about 6,550 uh, 6 you know, BCM things. Now, according to the other estimate, if you are only half of this one, we are already using whatever utilizable water. So, in fact, the whole projections people are making, which I will bring a slide again for the scenario for 2050 and type of where the water use is much larger, actually we really do not have water to uh, for the years to come and things. So, we are already at the verge of utilizing whatever water we have uh, today, which we can extract and use given the technology and the economic uh, viability. Now, what I would say is that if you go by the actual UFO transparent rate as let's say 60 percent, then the utilizable rainwater, it does really come down to around 4 percent. That's why I saying there's a 50 percent, uh, you know, increase the way the government estimates are done. So, actually we should work with figures which are much lower, which is actually available for uh, this. And there we are already touching that mark today. So, in the growth scenario, they have developed what you call a low growth rate or low water economy and a higher type of thing. So, in 2050, the projections is something like, um, you know, it's about 973 to 1180. That's the type of water use which is envisaged by the time we reach about 2050, which means that we don't have uh, that much of water anymore. Um, so, in fact, if you also find that in terms of per capita water availability, things have been coming down historically. But this does not say that the issue is only about water scarcity. I mean, do not get me uh, wrong when I say there are a lot of other inequities which is built into this. Now, for example, when I say that in 2005, the whole per capita availability is about 1,300 odd, which means that there are regional inequalities and also within the region there is also inequities of different types which is built into which I think we will discuss uh, later. So, equitable access to water is one of the ways to, you know, get out of this type of scenario. There are a whole lot of social cultural factors which are we need to take into account. So, it is not only a biophysical reality which you are talking about, there are a whole lot of, especially when you talk about water, the social cultural reality is another important issue. So, one is that what we saw is that the whole water available to us today, there is very little scope to manipulate too much, I mean the in terms of availability, in terms of numbers. So, one of the ways we need to do is that how do we curtail or what I call how do you bring down the footprint uh, of development to a great extent? And I mean, that is one of the important issues. A number of projects cannot increase the water which is available after a point and things. Uh, the second issue is that the sectoral use. I mean, sectoral use has been changing over time, and this is something which we need to take note of. Now, we say that, for example, a rough estimation is again is that if you look at surface water consumption today. Uh, around 89 percent is agriculture, 2 percent is industries and 9 percent is domestic and more or less the same trend you see in the groundwater, 92 percent, 5 percent and 3 percent. So, this is a broad division today which is taking place which will change over time. Now, in 2000, we find that irrigation still accounts for about 85 percent. In fact, the largest user everywhere. Globally, I think probably it is only about 80 or 75 percent, but in India it is about 85 percent water goes into that. Domestic about 6 to 7 percent industry is very less till then. Uh, we will see the issue with industry is not only the amount of water it uses, but also in what form it comes back into the system. The whole water quality and its impact is also a serious issue and things. Uh, this is a projection they have made for um, you know, 2050. Uh, so, we find that irrigation will come down uh, to about 628 to 8, uh, 807. But we find industries, if you took eight industries power uh, together going up more than doubling uh, than what it was in let us say 1997 and things. Uh, so, that is a very rapid increase in terms of water allocation, water use for the industrial sector. Uh, and th so, this is one of the changes which we need to take place through industry. I mean, basically, from agri the movement from agriculture to industry and also to urban areas. This is something which we need to take note of, which in the coming years uh, is going to increase uh, uh, quite a bit. But in terms of actual proportion, probably still agriculture would, I mean, would account for about 75 percent or around that and things. But, uh, but any water which is taken out of the agriculture also means that the livelihood on which this, I mean, people are depending on the agriculture needs also uh, goes down to the new uh, industrial uh, allocation will not create that much of livelihood for the people. Uh, in fact, if you see, actually only now I think environmental concerns are being taken into account. Now, for example, when you make a river basin planning and type of a thing earlier, after all the allocations are done, if there is a residual water, in fact, environmental flow is an issue which we will like come back later and think, but there was no explicit thing. Only now I think if you look at the Krishna 
tribunal award. They have told each state, I think about 10 to 15 percent of their allocation need to be left as uh, environmental flows and things. So only for environment and ecology, you find some mention in the later years because now in the river basin planning, you are supposed to uh, take into account some environmental flow. Uh, people, some people say thumb rule is 15 percent or something or they talk about minimum environmental flow synthesis. But this is an issue which we need to come back as a new critical issue, uh, allocation for ecosystem needs. <coughs> 